Hello friends, this video on excretory products and their elimination part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about the next topic that is micturation. In micturation, micturation is nothing but another term for urination. So here we will see that okay, we got to know that the urine is formed and it reaches the urinary bladder where it is going to be stored. Now the question is how do we know that okay now this is the time to pass urine. So how do we get that uh, I mean feeling? How do we get to know that okay it is the time for you to urinate? Or and how the urine passes out of the urinary bladder to the urethra? How does it reach there? So we will talk about that process of urination in this topic. So what is micturation? So it is the release of urine from urinary bladder through the urethra. So this process of release of urine is called micturition or urination. In simple terms, it is called uh, urination. Now generally, urinary bladder acts as the storage of urine and in a human adult, the capacity of the bladder is around 400 to 500 milliliters. That is, it can store around 400 to 500 milliliters of urine. The process of urination occurs involuntarily in children up to 4 to 5 years. And you would have observed that for infants, for very small kids, they do not get to know that, okay, this is the time to urinate. They just pass urine anytime they want and they don't even understand when to pass it and when not to pass it. It is not that only if you take them to a toilet, they'll urinate. So small kids, they will pass urine anywhere, whether they are on the bed or they are playing or they are in the bathroom. So anywhere they'll urinate. That, that is because it happens involuntarily. That is, it, it cannot be controlled. It is not. It does not happen in a controlled way. But as the kid starts growing, maybe when it is three to four years old, it started getting regulated voluntarily. That means the person gets to know that, okay, now it is the time to pass urine. You would have often observed that sometimes it happens that the bladder is full. So you feel like urinating, but since the situations are not favorable, for example, if you do not get a toilet, or let us suppose uh, if you are writing down your exams, so it is not possible for you to get out and urinate. So in that case, you are able to control it until and unless you get suitable circumstances. So that is what I mean by regulated voluntarily. That means you can control it. You can understand when to pass urine. So that urination is under your control. So here we will talk about that voluntary regulation of urine, that how this process of urination is regulated. Now, before we discuss that, let us quickly talk about the structure of the urinary bladder because urinary bladder plays the most important role in the process of urination. So, urinary bladder, as you can see in this picture, it is a sac-like structure or a bag-like structure, you can say. You see here, it's quite spacious, it looks big and a bag-like structure, which is collapsible. That is, you can actually uh, contract or expand it. That is something interesting. Now, why is it collapsible? How does it get this collapsible nature? It gets because of the muscles which are present on the walls of the bladder. Where is it located? It is located in the pelvis region. And the walls are made up of muscles which are called detrusor muscles. So these detrusor muscles are the main important person who is involved in the process of urination. So this wall of the urinary bladder has these specialized muscles called detrusor muscles. Now we will look at the speciality of these muscles. That is what important role do they play in the process of urination. We will talk about that. Lower portion of the bladder is known as the bladder neck. So this portion is called the bladder neck. And then finally the bladder proceeds to the urethra which has a urethral opening. Okay. So these are the important uh, points regarding the structure of urinary bladder. So now the most important question that is how is micturition regulated? How can we control the process of urination? Now let us see how is the process of urination regulated in case of adults or in case of children uh, above 4 or 5 years age. Now normally a human adult excretes 1 to 1.5 liters of urine per day and 
This 1 to 1.5 liters of urine contains around 25 to 30 grams of urea. So just imagine the amount of nitrogenous wastes that come out with the urine. Right. So the question is, how is the process of urination regulated? Now what happens is, as I said, the urine gets formed in the kidneys and then it comes through the ureter to the urinary bladder and it gets stored there. But once the urinary bladder is full with urine, because the urinary bladder also has a capacity, which I said is around 400 to 500 ml. So that is the capacity, that is the maximum amount of urine that the urinary bladder can hold. But in one day, an adult excretes almost 1 to 1.5 liters of urine. So it is not possible that a person urinates only once in a day. That is not possible, right? Because it can hold only 500 ml and a person has to urinate around 1.5 liters a day. So what happens is, as soon as the urinary bladder is full, a signal is sent to the central nervous system, that is the brain. Now the interesting part here is who sends that signals? Who gets to know that, okay, the bladder is full now, so it's the time. Now, there are some special cells called the stretch receptors which are present on the walls of the urinary bladder. So that is why we talked about the structure of the urinary bladder. Now, what happens is, as, the, as more and more urine gets collected in the bladder, the muscles on the walls of the bladder, they start stretching. The bladder kind of gets stretched. Now, when it has the maximum possible volume, in that case, there is no further stretching. And that is the time when the stretch receptors, which are present on the walls of the uh, bladder, they get a signal that, okay, now it is full. We cannot stretch anymore. So those stretch receptors will send a signal to the central nervous system. So the central nervous system will get to know, that is your brain, will get to know that, okay, fine, the bladder is full now. So what will the brain do? The brain in turn will send a response. And what would be that response? The brain, brain will send a response that the detrusor muscle should contract. What are the detrusor muscles? So you have the detrusor muscles somewhere here. That is the muscles which are collapsible. That is they are capable of contraction and expansion and they are present on the walls of the uh, urinary bladder. So it sends a signal that these muscles should contract and the sphincter muscles should relax. What is sphincter muscle? Sphincter is a, a muscular, uh, oh, you can say it is a door kind of a thing between the urinary bladder and the urethra. So here you can see these are the sphincter muscles. These are the sphincter muscles. So these muscles should relax and these muscles, the detrusor muscles should contract. So what will happen as a result of that? Something like this. So when these detrusor muscles which are present in the walls of the intestine will contract. So you see they all came so close to each other. So as a result the urine which was stored in the bladder will be pushed downwards because of that contraction. At the same time the sphincter muscles got relaxed. So when they got relaxed there was a space which was created in between and this urine which was being pushed downwards they start to flow out through this opening and that is how the urine is released. So the process of urination happens due to the contraction and relaxation of the detrusor muscles which are present on the walls of the urinary bladder and the sphincter muscles which are present in between the urinary bladder and the urethra and it is totally controlled by the central nervous system that is the brain and the spinal cord and the related nerves. So this is how the process of urination is controlled or regulated. Now you would have observed that sometimes if uh, you do not get a toilet nearby but, but you get that feeling of urinating. So when do you get that feeling of urination? When you receive a when your stretch receptors send a signal to your brain that okay the urinary bladder is full. So then you get to know that okay I need to pass urine. But if you do not get a special circumstance, your brain understands that, okay, the situations are not proper. So what does the brain do? The brain delays in sending the responses because only once the brain send this response to the uh, detrusor muscles and the sphincter muscles, after that you cannot control your urine. Once they start contracting and relaxing, the urine has to be released. 
so your brain will delay in sending the response because brain is something who knows what is happening around you right so when you see that okay this is not a suitable situation where where i should urinate so your brain will say that okay wait for some time i'll send the signal or i'll send the uh, response only after five minutes so when the brain sends that signal the detrusion muscles and the sphincter muscles will contract and relax uh, respectively and as a result the urine will be released so this is how the process of urination is regulated thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos Attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.